Northwest beekeepers are looking for help trying to stop a top killer of honeybees. A recent survey shows nearly half of honeybee colonies are dying off because of a mite. Erica Zuka with our Environment Northwest team shows us how it's impacting beekeepers. I just love bees. I love the sound of them in the summer. You could spend your whole lifetime learning about bees. They're absolutely magical. Surrounded by the sight of thriving bees. Ooh, goodness, this is a nice strong hive. And a sound she finds soothing. These hives are where beekeeper Dawn Beck finds peace and purpose. Oh, there we go. So here's one where they're just drawing out brand new wax. Mm -hmm. Now retired from her career as an accountant and CFO, her seasons are marked by the needs of these honeybees. But I always move really slowly. So I try not to, um, not to squish any. Her hives are located at boldly grown farms in the Skagit Valley, where they can play an important role. And just one of these hives can hold around 50,000 bees. Every third bite of food is due to a honeybee. We think of apples and we think of berries and how important those are, but even things like um, kale and Brussels sprouts and broccoli come from seed. And we don't get seed if we don't have honeybees. They are the best pollinators on the planet. But to protect the pollinators, beekeepers must defend them from what studies name as the leading threat to their health. It's a parasite mite called the Varroa destructor, and it attacks and feeds on honeybees, killing them. It's not actually the varroa mite itself that kills the bee right off, but it makes them sick and it damages them in ways so they can't make winter bees. The mite was indigenous to Asia, but was accidentally transported to Africa, Australia, Europe, and the United States, prompting global concern. There are some treatments that help, but years into work to stop them, they've hardly budged. If you have bees, you have mites. It's just, it's just guaranteed. She can use some techniques to slow them down, but there's no simple long-term fix. These guys might have their brood up in the upper box. Let me double check here and see. For Dawn, that means regular testing and constant vigilance. The Varroa mite, in the spring, there's a few of them, and they bell curve up, and they build and build and build exponentially. So if you can keep them low in the spring, you can kind of flatten the curve and, and manage the Varroa so they don't kill your bees over winter. She's hoping agencies will invest in research to find a better solution. In the meantime, she says, honey lovers aren't at risk. It doesn't affect the honey. It doesn't affect anything except the bees themselves. But she hopes more will be done to keep hives healthy. You can see the little baby bees all in there. As for what we can all do to help honeybees in our community, Dawn says planting flowers and trees is key. Anything that blooms um, with blossoms, the bees will find either nectar or pollen. And anything that can give them a variety of pollen in their diet, just like we need a variety of foods, they need a variety of pollen. Keeping their food supply buzzing and helping ours take flight. For Environment Northwest, I'm Erica Zuko.